Now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, a momentous occasion. There's a significant amount of water as a sheet flow that runs right across the top of the ground. So the idea of this is to, you know, to get this laid in here where the bags are actually right. providing a, some degree of a berm. Right. So the water will hit this berm. The idea of having this ditch as level as we can get it is where, you know, so you know, equal. the water yeah. won't really run to another area and then overflow the berm. Right. But we don't have a an easy channel for water to go through. The water travels the path of leach resistance, so we want the, yep. the water to actually pull up behind these and through infiltration, the mycelium will eat up the bacteria and prevent it from going downstream. Oh, how many bags are we laying out for We lay we brought a total of 350. These bags are about 7,000 pounds of substrate. 20 pounds per bag, mm -hmm. and it's infused with an or native oyster mushroom strain from Mason County, where uh -huh. Mason County, Washington is. And this native oyster strain has anti E. coli uh, properties, antimicrobial properties against bacteria, and particularly we've tested against E. coli, which is the problematic coliform bacterium that is found in saltfish and saltwater estuary. So the idea of perlap sac, our gas permeable. And the thing lesson about mycelium is it loves fabrics. Mycelium is a cellular fabric, and we call it same self recognition. There's a quirk of nature that mycelium loves other fabrics. So, uh, biodegradable fabrics like burlap or cloth or, uh, yeah. it is really well suited to the architecture of the mycelium. It tends to run very quickly uh, through the mycelium, and the burlap allows breathability, porosity of gases. But it also retains moisture, and eventually it will dry out. But since we're going to make ground contact here, the mycelium will, will love this environment. The water passes through the mycelium um, bridge or filter system that you're putting here, and as it passes through and goes out the other side, you're going to have cleaner water on the other side. Cleaner water both in sediments as well as coliform bacteria and other, other microbes. This is an example of what you're talking about. Yeah, this is the fanning of the mycelium. It's coming up out of the spawn. Carbon colonizes the fabric first. And then as this dries out, the mycelium is going to seek water, so it's going to go internally. Strain is from Oxbow. Okay. Oxbow Campground. Yeah. That road that goes down, you know, that goes to the campground? Yeah. It says all the trees. Yeah. So that is not off, off the scope. This is, this is what we originally envisioned, just like yeah. this. Yeah. Plus, when it, once it's rained and you've got water flow here, you can come take a look and see if Absolutely. there's any yeah. problem areas. Absolutely. I'll be spots. out here for <laughs> rainfall and checking it out. 1937, Franklin Roosevelt set up the Conservation Corps. The Conservation Corps is dedicated to helping landowners and farmers preserve soil. And so they've been very active in all counties in the United States in helping farmers manage their resources so they can be sustainable. And this is one perfect example of why we can work with the conservation districts in helping farmers ameliorate the impact they have on downstream environments. Come on, right over to my stadium. Come on, come on. Come on over here and go. <laughs> This is a very nice ceremonial conclusion to our event, <laughs> to have geese honking overhead. 350 bags I put down in a, an hour and 20 minutes. Hour and 20 minutes, yeah. With about five, probably five to six active people. The rest of you guys were screwing off. <laughs> but that's okay. We appreciate you anyhow. So we'll come back in a, a month, and uh, Karen will be inspecting, and when Karen sees something Uniquely interesting, give us a jingle. Oh,